ossification that occurs in the fetus about nine weeks development. Then we've talked about growth. So bones growing longer and wider that occurs through adolescence until the individual is done growing by the time they're a young adult typically. After that point, bones are no longer forming or growing, but they are still active. There are active tissues that can remodel and repair. So remodeling is based on the forces that a bone experiences, exercise, lack of exercise, different hormones even um, to some extent can change how the bone, the structure of the bone, remodel it. Um, and then the bone can also heal. So repair, I'll talk about briefly. So bone remodeling is, um, based on mechanical stress. So based on where compressive forces occur, um, where the stress is greatest, that will stimulate bone growth and bone removal. So this is showing over time, based on where the force is coming from, um, how the bone can adapt to remove bone here, add bone here, to now have that force be better distributed along that, those compact um, pieces of the diaphysis. So a force, and that's actually um, the physical force stimulating osteoblasts. The, so we have an alteration, a remodeling, we now have a different physical structure um, based on the force that is received. Another example of remodeling is astronauts losing bone density um, in, in space for extended periods of time and weight bearing exercises increase bone density overall and then also can um, lead to remodeling as well. Weight lifters, um, to show a picture of this, actually have thicker bone, right, with those muscles attached and the muscles that they use most for weightlifting would be thickest right where like if a muscle attaches right here it would build up bone because of the force right at that spot. And then aging is also something that tends to decrease osteoblast activity, increase osteoclast activity and can lead to changes in the bone structure and deterioration. Um, so remodeling can happen based on activity levels. In addition to that and, and related because um, the fact that the entire, your entire skeleton actually is replaced um, over time. So about five to 10% of your skeleton is replaced in a year. So that provides an opportunity to, um, because that bone is active to remodel as it's being replaced as well. Um, but even regardless of changes in forces, this is something that, that occurs kind of regardless. Okay, also have a learning check here. What type of cells is completing A and B in this picture? What cell is present doing that thing? Okay, the other thing, of course, that bones can do is heal. So they are vascular, they have blood vessels, so if there's a fracture, which is a break in the bone, um, there's a healing process that goes on. Your book has a different classification of fractures, a lot of different ways to classify types of fractures, um, severity, et cetera. Um, this, is, this is one way. So displaced or non-displaced um, is whether the bones are still in alignment or not. Um, you can imagine there's a different severity and categories of each of these. So for non-displaced, for example, here are oops, two different categories of non-displaced, um, transverse and, and linear. You could potentially have a transverse displaced fracture as well, right? If this bone was moved over. This is referring to the cut along which the, the line, um, the plane along which the, the break is. So along a linear or longitudinal plane, versus a transverse cross-section break. 
Um, lastly, for the ones I have, one that you'll, you've probably heard of is um, closed or open. Closed is a simple fracture and open is a compound fracture. This is typically going to be displaced as well. So when these fractures occur, your body is going to heal. Um, so let's say we have this fracture right here. Um, we're going to first have a hematoma. That is a blood clot. Um, bleeding occurs to form a hem hematoma. Then we've got rapid cell division occur to form a soft callus. A soft callus, something cells have to divide and form that tissue, um, collagen fibers, as well as some cartilage, actually. It's um, a fibrocartilage. What's the word? It's kind of a fibrocartilage. So it's um, chondrocytes, chondroblasts, and fibroblasts creating this temporarily protective callus. Then we've got a hard callus that forms. What do you think this is formed by? Well, we've got osteoblasts are going to come in and replace that cartilage. Kind of like endochondral ossification. First, this is going to be replaced by spongy bone because that, um, right with those trabeculae, that's what forms first until it's filled in. At this point, with the hard callus of spongy bone, the fracture is usually healed enough to withstand normal muscle contraction forces. Um, but it's not actually done yet. So what happens last is bone remodeling. Bone remodeling. Um, so osteoblast activity and osteoclast activity to turn that spongy bone into compact bone, which is more strong. Osteoblast activity would be the primary driver. Osteoclast is helping to, to remodel 